This lesson on electrostatics is grade 11 work, but it is work that you need to know for grade 12. In this lesson, I'll be going through the laws and definitions that you have to know for your exam. I'll be going through the equations. Some of them are on the data sheet and a few are not. And I will also be going through the diagrams for electric fields. We are going to start off with Coulomb's law, which states that the magnitude of the electrostatic force exerted by one point charge on another point charge is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance r between them. Now before we look at the equation, I want to point out a few things. This law has to do with the force. It's the magnitude of the force exerted by one point charge Q1 on another point charge Q2. The force that Q1 exerts on Q2 will have the same magnitude as the force that Q2 exerts on Q1, whether this force is attraction or repulsion. And that will be dependent on whether the, the charges have the same sign or opposite signs. When we look at the equation, F is equal to Coulomb's constant multiplied by the product of the charges and it's inversely proportional to the distance between the centers squared. Now K is Coulomb's constant and it has very specific units, newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. So your distance between the centers of your charges must be in meters because the constant has meters. And then the charges have to be in coulombs because the constant is in coulombs. They will probably give you your charges in micro, milli, nano or pico coulombs and we'll look at those conversions just now. When you state Coulomb's law, please remember to say that the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges and do not say indirectly proportional to the square. You must say inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the charges. We are now going to look at the equation that goes with Coulomb's law. This equation is on your data sheet. And if we take the constant in any equation, remove it, your equal sign becomes a proportionality. Now we can predict what graphs would look like. If we say that R is also constant, then we can leave that out as well. Then this proportionality becomes that. So now we can say that force is directly proportional to the product of the two charges. And here is the graph. The two charges determine the force. So the product of the two charges are on the horizontal axis. They are the independent variable. And the force depends on the size of the charges. So the force is the dependent variable. It's a direct proportionality. Therefore, it's a straight line through the origin. Now I'm going to go back to this proportionality. If our charges are constant, but we vary the distance between the two charges, then you, the, this is what the proportionality will look like. Q1 and Q2 are now constant, so F is inversely proportional to R squared. You can read this or say this in two ways. You can say force is inversely proportional to R squared, or you can say force is directly proportional to 1 over R squared. So the two graphs that we will have from that, the first graph is 1 over R squared on the horizontal axis. It's a straight line through the origin because force is directly proportional to 1 over R squared. And if we plot force versus R squared, it's a hyperbola. That is the graph for an inverse proportionality. You must know these three graphs. As I said before, the SI unit of charge is the Coulomb, and the symbol for that is the capital C. But they will give you charges in picocoulombs, nanocoulombs, microcoulombs, or millicoulombs. I've made a quick summary here for you. Please make sure that you know the following. So I'll just go through one of them. 1.2 picocoulombs is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12 coulombs. All you do in the place of the small P, you say times 10 to the negative 12. In the place of an N, you would say times 10 to the negative 9. In the place of the micro, times 10 to the negative 6. And milli, in the place of the little m, you would say times 10 to the negative 3. 
An example, we have two charged spheres with charges positive 6, mi 6 6,3 microcoulombs and positive 4,6 microcoulombs. They are going to touch each other and move apart. You must calculate the new charge on each of the two spheres. When the spheres touch, there will be a transfer of electrons. Electrons transfer, please take note that it is not protons that transfer, always electrons when the objects touch each other. The sphere on the left is more positive than the sphere on the right. That means that this one has lost more electrons than that one. If a sphere is negatively charged, it means that it has more electrons than protons. These have both got more protons than electrons, so they have lost electrons. This one has lost more electrons, so our transfer of electrons will be from the one on the right-hand side to the one on the left-hand side, because this one is less positive than that one. I have labelled the spheres A and B, and as you can see again, A is more positive than B, it means it has lost more electrons, so when they touch, electrons will transfer from B to A. To calculate the new charge on each sphere, they will have the same charge, you add up their charges. Now if B had been negative 4,6 microcoulombs, then you put the sign negative in there. You must use the signs in this equation, the signs for the charges. In our example, they are both positive. You add up the charges and divide by 2. So the charge on each sphere, sphere is 5,45 microcoulombs. If they want the answer in coulombs, then you say 5,45 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. For this example, I'm just going to leave the answer in microcoulombs. If this were an exam question, I would still write the final answer in coulombs. Electrons transfer from sphere B to sphere A, so that each of the spheres will end up with the same charge. Another question that they could ask you is to calculate the number of electrons that are transferred from the one sphere to the other. We're first going to look at this equation, which is on your data sheet. You use this equation to calculate the number of electrons, the actual charge on the sphere, that charge, divided by the elementary charge, which is the charge on an electron on your data sheet, would give you the number of electrons that have been removed there, and you can do the same one for that one. You can work out how many electrons have been removed. But when they want you to calculate the number of electrons transferred, you change this equation to that, where your number of electrons is the change in charge on one or the other sphere divided by the elementary charge on an electron. So it's the final charge on sphere A minus the initial charge on sphere A divided by E. This is on your data sheet. Or you can say the final charge on sphere B minus the initial charge on sphere B divided by the elementary charge on an electron. Or you can say Q final minus Q initial is change in Q. Use either of these two. Again, this is an equation that is not on the data sheet, but use this equation to calculate the number of electrons that are tra transferred from one charge to another. If we look at our two spheres, the initial charges are on the top, sphere A and sphere B, with the same values as I had before. This is before contact. Then when they have contact, electron tr electrons transfer from B to A. So after contact, they have the same charge. They are both positive 5,45 microcoulombs. We've just worked that out. Now to calculate the number of electrons transferred from B to A, you can calculate using either of the two spheres. So I've done the calculation for sphere A and for sphere B. So we'll look at A first. The number of electrons transferred is the final charge on A minus the initial charge on A divided by the charge on one electron. The final charge on A is 5,45 microcoulombs. The initial charge is 6,3 microcoulombs. Again, you must use the correct signs here for your charges. So 5,45 microcoulombs is 5,45 times 10 to the negative 6 minus 6,3 microcoulombs is 6,3 times 10 to the negative 6. 
Calculate this and you get a total of 5,3125 times 10 to the 12 electrons were transferred from sphere B to sphere A. You only have to do one or the other, but let's check to see what we get when we work with sphere B. Sphere B's final charge is 5,45 microcoulombs and the initial charge is 4,6 microcoulombs. So the final minus the initial, I've substituted them in, divided by the charge on an electron, and I get exactly the same answer for sphere B, the, change, the number of electrons removed, as the number of electrons gained by sphere A. Now take note, in the one calculation you will get a negative value on the top because 5,45 is smaller than 6,3. So I put a negative at the bottom so that I get a positive answer. The other sphere will give you a positive value on top because 5,45 minus 4,6 gives you a positive on the top. So make it a positive at the bottom so that you get a positive value. The question is calculate the number of electrons transferred. So you want positive values here. You get the same answer for both. We are now going to look at two important definitions in this chapter. The first one is the definition of an electric field. An electric field is a region in space in which an electric charge experiences a force. The direction of the electric field at a point is the direction that a positive test charge would move if placed at that point. So a charged object has a field around it, so a little test charge would experience a force in that area. I'm going to go through that when we look at the electric field drawings. The next definition is very important. This one is asked a lot in exam questions. It is the definition of an electric field at a point. Look out for this when you answer exam questions and practice answering questions. The electric field at a point is the electrostatic force experienced per unit positive charge placed at that point. Here is the equation that goes with it. This is on your data sheet. The electric field is equal to the force experienced by one coulomb of positive charge. So the equation F over Q gives us the unit for electric field strength. It is Newton per coulomb. Newton per coulomb. Electric field strength, electric fields are vectors because they have direction. Our definition of an electric field said that it is a region in space in which an electric charge experiences a force and the direction of the electric field at a point is the direction that a positive test charge would move if placed at that point. Now I have a few fields that I have drawn here. Electric field direction is always away from positive and towards negative because according to the definition, it is the direction in which an imaginary positive test charge would move. Here I have a positively charged sphere or object. So a test charge, a positive test charge, be it there or there, would move away. So that is the direction of the electric field. Here we have a negatively charged object. So a positive test charge would move towards it. So they, therefore that is the direction of the field. Now a few things about drawing field lines. You must make the lines touch the object and they must touch the object at 90 degrees. So you must try to make it look like this is touching that circle at 90 degrees. What I have done here is a mistake. This does not touch the sphere at 90 degrees. So you may lose a mark for doing something like that, for drawing it incorrectly. Always put arrows on your field lines Never let your field lines um, cross each other and, um, as I said, make them touch the object. When we have two positively charged objects, your field lines will have this shape. If they were both negative, we would have the same shape, but the arrows would go towards, because field lines always go towards negative. Here we have a positive and a negative, so the field lines are going away from positive and towards negative. All four of these are not uniform fields because the fields are strongest closest to the charges and weaker where the field lines are further away from each other. This is the only example where we will have a uniform electric field. Except on the ends, the field is weaker 
on the ends of the plates the field is weaker therefore we draw a curved line to show that the field lines are further apart which represents a weaker field. Again your field lines move from positive to negative so if I choose any points in between these plates the field will be the same strength at all those points. This is the only time that we will have a uniform electric field. The last equation we are going to look at in this chapter is the equation that we use to calculate the electric field strength at a point a certain distance from a charge. We use this equation, electric field strength, again Coulomb's constant, the size of the charge and the distance from the charge. The unit again for electric field strength is newtons per coulomb and please remember that electric field strength has direction. When you use this equation never include the negative sign if you have a negative charge. Always use a positive for the charge in this equation. When we do more difficult examples, you will see exactly why we choose to do this. Very briefly, the positive and negative signs are used for the direction of the electric field. This equation is on your data sheet. And just one more thing, do not confuse this equation with the equation that goes with Coulomb's law. This equation is for calculating electric field strength and this equation, the first one we dealt with, is for calculating the force between two charges.